Push it. Rejoice always, I say it again, rejoice. I thought, here is a bishop, a man truly after the heart of Christ. Here is a man filled with the Holy Spirit and power, a man who radiates the joy, the love, the peace of Christ. This, my brothers, is the mark of a God-dominated personality. The transforming power of grace on a soul indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The true love that casts out fear. He's got it. He's got it all. Now, when Bishop Francis spoke at the conference, he told a story that I'll never forget about a boy in his diocese, a 10-year-old boy named Shalom Admali. Now, this boy, Shalom Admali, had just received the sacrament of confirmation. He had been confirmed by Bishop Francis. And this kid was on fire with the grace of the Holy Spirit. He had this anointing in the Holy Spirit and he just couldn't contain himself. He couldn't keep it to himself. He had to share that faith, that fire, that truth with everyone that he knew. He had to tell everyone about Jesus. Now, Shalom Admali lived in a predominantly Muslim village where the Christian and Muslim boys still play together. And he was telling his friends about Jesus and talking about what he had learned at his catechism and singing the hymns that he knew. And the Muslim boys went home and they told their parents what they had heard from Shalom. And the parents went and told the local Muslim clerics, the mullahs. The mullahs became enraged. They saw this as proselytizing. Now, proselytizing by Christians is a very serious crime in Pakistan, a crime punishable by imprisonment. But that wasn't good enough for the mullahs. They wanted this kid dead. So they trumped up the charges against him. They accused the boy of blasphemy, defaming and insulting Islam and the Prophet, a crime punishable by death, death by hanging. So 10-year-old Shalom Admali was arrested along with the adult males in his family. They were put into prison and put on trial for blasphemy. Bishop Francis and the other bishops of Pakistan sounded the alarm. The word went out to Catholics and Christians all over Pakistan to pray. Catholics gathered in their churches all over the country to pray, to pray before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, to pray for justice and for the protection of this boy and his family. When the day of the trial came, Bishop Francis and some priests of the diocese, the members of the boy's family went together to the courthouse. To get into the courthouse, they had to make their way through an angry mob, a hostile crowd of about a thousand men, all men, stirred up into a fever pitch, hands raised in the air, and clenched fists, pumping, chanting, death, death, death to Shalom Mali. The case was tried by a panel of secular judges who, by the grace of God, saw through the falsehood of the charges, the malice of the mullahs. Shalom Admali was acquitted along with the members of his family and set free. While the boy and his family were on their way home, as they stood and waited at a bus station, a gunman opened fire on them. Shalom Admali was hit, badly wounded. A member of his family was killed. Bishop Francis went to visit the boy in the hospital and they talked together and prayed together for a long time. The bishop asked the boy what he was going to do when he got out of the hospital, what he wanted to do when he got home. And the boy answered without hesitation, I'm going to tell everyone about Jesus. Brothers, I'll tell you in all honesty, it makes me shudder. It makes me shudder when I think of the courage of that boy. That 10-year-old boy is more of a man than I am. 
He is a more loyal son of the church than I am. That little boy in the face of persecution and imprisonment and death could not be intimidated, could not be shamed, could not be cowed into silence. That was the depth of his love, the love that casts out fear. When I think of our Catholic brothers and sisters in that part of the world and so many other parts of the world, facing persecution every single day, I wonder, I wonder, my brothers, how many of us would be ready to imitate their example, their courage, their virtue. And I ask myself the same question I'll ask you here and now. What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? Why do so many of us, and when I say us, I mean Catholics in general, Catholics in America, fail time and time again to stand up, speak up, to defend the cause of Christ? Why is it that time and time again, the culture of death seems to prevail over the culture of life. We are members of the mystical body of Christ. We rightly call ourselves the people of God, the people whose God is God, and we say, if God is for us, who can be against us? So, what are we afraid of? Why do we allow ourselves to be intimidated by the secular, agnostic, pagan culture that we live in. Why is it so many Catholics and Christians are content to sit back, stand by idly and watch the pagan conquest of this country? Please, fellas, don't tell me that it's all different now. Please, don't talk to me about political correctness. Don't just tell me we're living in a pluralistic society. Leave it at that. God help us. You know what? It's like we are concerned with everyone's opinion but God's. We're afraid of offending everyone but God, so it seems. But you know, the world will tolerate everything and everyone but Christ. Christianity the church, the truth. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So, brothers, what are we afraid of? Let's not kid ourselves, huh? Things in our country, spiritually speaking, are not getting better, they are getting worse. And I say to you again, time is not on our side in this. It is late in the game. All this time we've been talking about the spiritual battle of our time. Well, I would suggest to you the spiritual battle is very quickly becoming the spiritual massacre of our time. There's an old saying, freedom is not free. <coughs> And don't think 